the O'Reilly conferences and certainly the Strata ones which are geared towards data, data science are using this Ignite uh, format to allow more speakers to, uh, to be able to share their knowledge. Take a look at what Scott Burkham has to say on how to prepare for it and come in on the 27th to present it. See you there. Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They range from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate, any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides that auto advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. I think storytelling is everything. It is everything. It's the most important thing that we do. It's the most important thing that we are. And if you go about thinking about life from the perspective of storytelling is everything, then doing things like public speaking or writing or talking or starting a relationship all become a lot simpler. Storytelling happens to be a universal thing. It's a timeless thing. It's something we have done as long as we have been a species. As long as we have been cultures and tribes and governments, we have been storytellers. And in fact, we align ourselves, the people we bond with, we have shared stories that often we tell again and again with each other. So storytelling is something we all do all the time, and we're all good at it. Any community you're in, any club you join, any team you root for, there's a set of stories that you all share. So when it comes to doing an Ignite talk, you guys already have stories, and you're already good at telling them, because that's why you're alive. Now, when it comes to doing a talk like this, doing this format, you have to be a little bit more concise in the kinds of stories that you tell. There's three piles of stories to think about. The first is what you love, what gets you excited. Now, I know for a fact that all of you did not commit suicide today. You're here. Why? What is it that gets you up in the morning? What gets you going? On the other end of the spectrum, there's what you hate, what makes you angry. What would you remove from the world if you could? Also, a place for passion. You can be passionate about what you hate. Because, in fact, if you think enough about what you hate and you flip it over, you probably have something you should be loving more. It's a trick involved, what you, what you love and what you hate. The third pile of stuff is what you're good at. What have you been doing for five years or ten years, and you finally had some kind of insight that you wish someone had told you when you started? That's money. That's so powerful. That's the most important, powerful kind of story you can tell in a crazy format like this. And if you have none of these three things, then your job is a meta story. You need to do things outside of this format that will give you opportunities to tell stories about. And if you fail that, then you get a meta story about the story, how you tried to find a story to tell, but you failed. That's also a story. Now, when it comes to this format, people get freaked out and I've got to tell my story up on stage. It's now this whole dynamic of public speaking. Well, you should know there's lots of famous public speakers that were actually lousy speakers. People like Cicero, Moses, and this guy, Lincoln. They were probably actually not very pleasant to listen to. They had stutters, high-pitched voices. But what they said was interesting. They told stories that they refined, and they made really clear what their points were. So people paid att more attention to the ideas and how it's actually said, which is true today. And in fact, in fact, the other thing to be worried about is the time limit. The Gettysburg Address is only about two minutes long to read. You could do two Gettysburg Addresses in one Ignite. So you have no worries about how long, yo, I can't fit anything. Yes, you can. You can fit it in. Now, the other fear people have has to do with the fact that the slides move on their own. There's this grim reaper looming overhead at every moment. It's going to come like a Terminator. It's going to knock me into the next thing. People are terrified about this. I happen to think it's kind of funny. I think it's kind of funny in the same way we worry about things that we can't control. You have two choices for things you can't control. You can be paranoid about them, deny them, or you can revel in them. And I think this is a perfect format. You guys know it's coming. It's part of the entertainment that we're all going to expect to have happen, and we can make a joyful experience come from it, right? You guys are going to support me if I screw up this slide, right? You guys are with me? Right. Thank you. All right. So Ignite audiences happen to be some of the best audiences to speak to because you guys are on my side. You might be drunk, and that may help a little bit. But you're on my side, you're going to back me if I make a mistake. So if you want to try out public speaking, you're going to get good, positive audiences in this environment. Now the last thing, this is the more practical portion of my five minutes, how to use time. It's a philosophical question, but a practical question for these five minutes. You only have time to say four or five things. So you want to be really careful what they are. You can't fit that much more into five minutes. So think about that before you get started. The second thing is you're going to lose your first slide and your last slide due to applause, people throwing things at you, your introduction. You're going to blow those. You're going to, pra you're going to practice and plan for having less time than even the 20 slides that you get. Now, the last thing is a little trick here. 
People get up here and they go into full speed mode. They're talking like auctioneers on crack and blah, 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 going really fast. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. So look in the upper right hand corner of this slide. In a second, you will see a little mark appear, a little cigarette burn mark. I have now put the same image on two consecutive slides. This is legal. It is allowed. You can hack the format as much as you want. A slide is a, a we don't use slides anymore. The whole notion of a slide is kind of ridiculous. So hack it to tell your story. The last thing, if you're working with four or five minutes of time, you can rehearse and practice 10 times in an hour. Now I recommend you do it at least once before you make any slides at all. Just so you can figure out what your points are and what you want to say. And then as you practice, build the material and backfill it in. So to sum up, all of you have a story to tell and you're good at it. Second, don't worry about the Grim Reaper. You can hack around that. And third, practice is everything. And I hope to see you guys up here next time. Thank you.